Hey everybody, we are teaching Tilt Brush, and this time we're really going to take extra control over our environment. We've seen all the main environment settings, and we've even taken some basic control to customize it using our lights panel and our backdrop panel. And we're actually going to get even more control this time to go for some very specific effects. So rather than just sticking with our natural normal environment and our normal lighting, we're going to see how we can use these to get even more specific control of the situation. I'm actually going to switch over and we're going to look at two that seem very similar, two environments that seem very similar. We have illustrative, and you'll notice I'm going to go in here with some uh, duct tape and do some loops. Illustrative versus plain white. You can see how my duct tape looks very different even though the overall environment seems almost the same. Here's the difference and how you can control when you want these situations yourself. Illustrative has no lighting. That's the real secret. You can see my duct tape here, no matter how you look at it, it's the same flat gray. We barely even see the texture of the duct tape. You can see the rough edges, but there's very little texture in the stroke. Whereas if we go to the plain white background, now we get the highlights and shadows, we get our lovely rough texture, that type of thing. This is all controlled with the lighting. We also have a little bit of control using our main backdrops here. Now the backdrop itself, you'll notice we've just got shades of gray. So they're plain, and we're not really dealing with a fog here at all. If I move my piece away, you can see how the fog affects the way we see that piece in the background, fading in, fading out. And the color of the fog directly affects the way that looks as it fades in and fade out. With a black fog, it gets darker as the fog rolls in. Whereas with a light fog, it gets paler as the fog rolls in. The lighting in this case for the sky is just the background. So you can see it's the same gray either way. What's interesting is we can go for darker shades of gray and paler shades of gray. And as long as we keep it roughly the same top to bottom, it's going to be that same uniform. It doesn't actually matter much where we set the top and the bright and the bottom because we're going for a pretty much uniform situation here. We could, I'm just going to tint it a little bit so it's a little darker down below, a little paler up above, but no real fog to worry about. Now, the real trick comes in with our lighting customization. By default, we tend to use the sun and the moon as our main lighting control. And you can see how moving those around, just like in our uh, customization episodes, controls that. What really comes in is when we start changing the values. The main difference between the illustrative, no lights and shadows, versus our white, lots of highlights and shadows, really are these colors. Not even the position. I'm going to move these a little closer so we can see what the heck Ben is talking about. So as you watch, obviously, we've seen how that changes the direction. But I'm actually going to turn this light off, completely black. I'm also going to turn the moonlight off, completely black. So there should be no highlights or shadows anywhere. The ambient light, the fill light, I crank up. So I've got a bright fill and nothing else. So now there's no highlight or shadow. And whatever color I paint in, 
I get sort of just a medium quality color of that paint. Because there's no highlight or shadow, I just have this generic ambient light, that's what's providing all of the light here. If I add color to it, you can see how it's gonna color my pieces, so I'm gonna keep it white. If I add any amount of these guys, now we get highlight and shadow. Any amount of this guy, highlight and shadow. Softer, but still highlight and shadow. It's the ambient light. So really, the illustrative is having no primary lights and only fill lighting. Whereas the white background has strong primary lights and a low fill light, so it keeps our highlight and shadow. So you, if you want to work without too much highlight and shadow distraction, here's what we're getting for. You can actually turn off your primary lights just by setting them to a pure black color. Anything not black will have your highlights and shadows, but we can turn them off completely, giving us a unique environment that has no highlighting. Everything becomes the unlit style of brush. So if you want to work with pure line and color, you can actually turn off your lighting completely. Here's a case where you can see I've got some lighting in the studio. I think it'll be more fun if I try to give this a little bit sim more of a similar studio lighting here. And turn that down. So now we have a strong studio light on the painting that's similar to the studio lighting on me, so we fit into our environment a little, more, a little better. So those of you doing mixed reality, think about your light source and how the light source in your environment, as well as the fading out in the colors, can help you blend in with your environment a little bit more. So these are a few more advanced tricks using our background customization to help give you a little bit more of the effects that you might be trying to achieve. I hope this helps and I hope this gives you inspiration for new things to try in your own sculptures. Let us know in the comments if you have questions or links to your own sculptures. It'd be fun to share them around to everybody. We do these lessons on a weekly basis, so go ahead and subscribe so we can let you know when the new lesson comes around. These are all archived on youtube.com slash shamelessmayhem, as well as done live on Twitch TV slash shamelessmayhem. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I hope this has been helpful. Have fun with Tilt Brush.